It is very clear to me and anyone who has listened to Delmarva Live over the past couple of days that a majority of our fellow citizens still take their religious faith very seriously and will defend that faith when challenged. But the question is, how far will they go to defend it? We will explore that question on the monologue. Great fences make good neighbors, all while providing safety, security, and privacy for you, your family, and your fur family. Backyard Works is your local fence, deck, and handrail experts, owned and operated right here in Sussex County. All materials are top quality and made in the USA. Backyard Works knows that home is where the heart is. Visit online to view stunning projects at backyardworks.net or call today for customer service that's unmatched. 302-703-9888. The monologue is entitled, Simon Peter, Are You Asleep? As Christmas 2019 fast approaches, we are dealing with another case of a government entity openly violating the Constitution and preventing us from worshiping as we see fit on public land. A couple of facts as I see them. First, the city of Rehoboth is banning the nativity from the bandstand because they know they can and get away with it. Those Rehoboth reprobates like Paul Coons are not afraid of your political threats you will have forgotten by the next election. And they are not afraid of your many phone calls. They just stopped answering the phones and sent your calls to a dead voicemail account. That's how they deal with it. You see, Coons, Lind, and the rest of them have you all figured out. And they are snickering at us right now. Although the vast majority of Americans still consider themselves religious, those numbers are declining. Millennials are falling in line with their Marxist educators, and even fewer of them identify as religious. We will discuss that in a moment. Those who run the city of Rehoboth feel that, like most controversial left-wing attackers of the middle class, you will call into WGMD to declare your outrage, you will make your feelings known on social media, and you perhaps will threaten the political futures of those responsible. But at the end of the day, don't you know that Paul Coons is not afraid of you? Don't you know that Sharon Lynn knows that you will eventually go away quietly? Because that is what the middle class does. We threaten to hold a rally or do this or do that and defend our constitutional protections. And in the end, we just go away quietly with a whimper. That has been our MO and the enemies of religious freedom know that full well. Otherwise, the enemies of God would never have attempted such a thing. Most of them have no fear of God because they are atheists. We despise Antifa and what they stand for, but you have to admit, people fear them. The Rehoboth reprobates have no fear of us. Several Delmarva Live listeners contacted me yesterday to suggest that we plan for a live nativity at the bandstand with actors, carolers, and prayers. It's a great idea, a wonderful idea. Do you really think that will happen? I do not. First of all, this is something that you plan months in advance, and based on all my years in the entertainment industry, there just isn't enough time to plan for something like this, unfortunately. An undertaking like a continual live nativity would require a significant commitment from the public. I don't see that commitment happening, my friends. Tell me that I am wrong. What about shutting down or disrupting their secular tree lighting festivities on November 29th? Again, great idea. But how many protesters can we count on to join us? How many of us would risk public disobedience to get their point across? I am not very confident. Why? Because our track record in this area has not been very good. Not good at all. That is why these things are happening to us and the secularists who despise Roman Catholicism and Christianity know full well that our efforts will fall flat and they will claim victory over our Lord and us. According to a 2018 Gallup survey, 72% of Americans say religion is important in their lives, including 51% who say it is very important. Christians' attachment to religion is even higher at 62%. They find it very important. That is the good news. The bad news is that those numbers are declining and the likes of Paul Coons and his crowd in Rehoboth believe that those declining numbers indicate that we are weaker as a faith-based community and are less likely 
likely to fight for our rights. And sadly, they may be right, as hard as it is for me to say. When Gallup first asked Americans to rate the importance of religion in their lives in 1952, 75% said it was very important to them. 20% said it was fairly important. That was 95% of the country. Just think of that in 1952. 95% of the country was, for the most part, religious. Those percentages were roughly the same when the question was asked in 1965. But by 1978, they had dropped to 52% very important and 32% fairly important. Since then, the percentage identifying religion as very important has fluctuated, rising above 61% in only two single readings, 64% in 2001 after the 9-11 attacks and 65% one year later. That's what Gallup has to say about religion in America. The Pew Research Center last month said that the decline of Christianity in America continues at a rapid pace. In polling conducted by Pew in 2018 and 2019, 65% of American adults describe themselves as Christians when asked about their religion. That figure is down 12 percentage points over the past decade. Meanwhile, the religiously unaffiliated share of the population consisting of people who describe their religious identity as atheist, agnostic, or nothing in particular now stands at 26% of the population, up from 17% 10 years ago. Both Protestantism and Catholicism are experiencing losses of population share. Currently, 43% of U.S. adults identify as Protestants. That's down from 51% in 2009. And one in five adults, 20% are Catholic. That's down from 23% in 2009. Only about one in three millennials say they attend religious services at least once or twice a month. Roughly two-thirds of millennials, 64%, attend worship services a few times a year or less often, including about four in ten who say they seldom or never go. Indeed, there are as many millennials who say they never attend religious services, a figure at 22%, as there are who say they go to church at least once a week. Obviously, God is not very important with millennials. Almost half of them could care less about their faith. Pew research showed that only 49% of millennials or the generation born between 1981 and 1996 identify themselves as Christians. 40% identify as religious nuns, which means they have no faith, while 10% say they are members of a non-Christian faith. I'm afraid to ask what that is. This marks the first generation in United States history that is a non-majority Christian age cohort. However, this poll indicates that other American generations are experiencing a rapid decline in Christianity as well. And that from the Pew Research Center. I'm sure we all realize that there are a number of reasons for the decline of faith in America. And I'm not going to go into them in this monologue. But the fact remains we still have significant numbers of Roman Catholics and other Christian denominations in this area. How many of those could we really count on to take a stand? And why haven't we heard from many of the area Christian denominational churches? Aren't they offended by this? Where are they? Where are the other pastors in our community? Well, the question is, will they stand with us? I am starting to doubt it because they have not spoken out publicly. If they have, I haven't heard them, have you? And what about our Jewish brothers and sisters? Don't you think that this kind of attack on religious freedom will one day find its way to your synagogue? Please don't forget there are many anti-Semites on the left and they are not afraid to show it. The Catholic League wants to get involved in our fight, but... How can they help us if our mouth is big but our will is weak? To prove my point, WBOC finally picked up the story last night. They quoted Father Coco as saying that he would accept placing the nativity in front of a local pizza place. If that is the case, the fight is over for now. But we know that those responsible will eventually pay for their political no place at the inn for our Lord. And where are my brother Knights of Columbus? I have not heard a peep from them. Not one knight has contacted me. Not one. I thought you guys would have been polishing your spiritual swords by now. I guess not. You have heard me say repeatedly over the past year that we have the government in Washington that we deserve. It also appears that this false constitutional amendment, freedom from religion, will be the law of the land unless we become Christian soldiers and fight for he who has blessed us with so much. Are we going to be Christian soldiers 
or Christian spectators. And here is a thought for Mayor Coons. Why not change the seal of the city of Rehoboth from a lighthouse to a serpent? A serpent is far more descriptive of your administration, isn't it? And finally, let us not forget the lesson in the Garden of Gethsemane. Then Jesus returned and found them sleeping. Simon, are you asleep? He asked. Were you not able to keep watch for one hour? The question is, can we manage to keep watch at all? And that is the monologue. What say you? The monologue was sponsored locally by Backyard Works, your premier fence, deck, and handrail source. Owned and operated here in Sussex County. Visit them online to view stunning projects at backyardworks.net and give the local experts a call for your free quote today. 302-703-9822.